a man. Peyton Manning stepping out. It's the Zion Show. Pass is caught by John. The following is an exclusive presentation of Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Championship Sunday, two coaches and two top-seeded teams. Both have won it before, and both passionately covet this trophy. To the victors, the spoils on this day. Come on! ACC Championship of 96. No long shot for the defending champs. No slam dunk clinch for the top seed. Tim Duncan of Wake Forest, one of the nation's best big men. Stephon Marbury of Tech, one of the nation's newest sensations. Wake would love to take away the lane and give it to their dunking deacon. Georgia Tech, biggest speed and cunning is their best counter. Who has the passion? The ACC Finals will tell us it's the best college basketball has to offer. The championship of the tournament, and it's next. We are ready for the ACC Championship here at the Greensboro Coliseum. And each squad will be bidding for its fourth ACC Championship. Georgia Tech has won three out of the four finals that they've been involved with. The Deeks won it back to back in 61 and 62. They'd love to win it back to back in 95 and 96. Larry Rose is the referee working his second ACC final. Dick Paparo and Frank Scagliata working with him. Rick Hartzell is the alternate. We're ready for the tip to start Championship Sunday. Georgia Tech opens in the man-to-man. -man. Deacons wearing black today. Up top, to Tim Duncan to open the scoring. Beautiful feed. And you may as well establish that big guy early. Let everybody know he's there, just in case Georgia Tech needed any reminder. Deeks also in a man-to-man. -man. And it's Eddie Alisma trying to answer back. What you have to do if you're Georgia Tech trying to get back in transition defense, you have to identify the shooters and go get them. Oh, the big fella start high. Four nothing weight. He has had two huge games in this tournament. As has this young man, Stephon Marbury, with an opening three. In the first two games of this tournament, every time Georgia Tech has needed a big basket, someone has stepped up. And Marbury putting a stop to that early Wake Forest run with a big three. And Harpering with the foul, working against Parole. Harpering is a very aggressive defender. And how in the world is Harpering's hair so sweaty? We just started the game. <laughs> that's just a, that's an indication of how hard he works. But Harpering has to be careful. He cannot afford to have himself in foul trouble if Georgia Tech's going to be able to win this game. Aggressive defense is one thing, but you've got to also play intelligently on the defensive end. Nice defense. Nice fake by LaRue. Barberry out to Barry. Alyssa zips it to Harpering. Matt all the way to the bucket. Duncan got it. Not going to get all the way to the bucket against Duncan very often. Timmy with eight blocks of the tournament coming into the game. Nice pass. Score. And the foul on Maddox. Bob, you mentioned the outstanding tournament that Tim Duncan has played thus far. He comes across and blocks the shot, pulls it down. Now he gets up the court working very hard for position. He's all alone in there. Maddox finally comes over to help, but it's too late. Georgia Tech has to put better pressure on the ball, so it's harder to pass it inside to Duncan. Terrific numbers against the Jackets this season and seven points in the first two minutes and two seconds today. Been too easy thus far for Wake Forest on the offensive end. Duncan can play off of Lisma a bit when Lisma's on the perimeter. Maddox. Duncan just grabbing everything in sight. You're right, Bob. I wonder if he's going to get every rebound today. That's three now. Off LaRue and out of bounds. Now, LaRue's a quarterback, he's not a receiver. <laughs>
the two regular season games keep in mind in the 60s. Go ahead, tuck him now. Georgia Tech of course has played two games in the 80s in this tournament so they're very comfortable with the quick pace. Gary missing the three and there's no you don't even have to say it. just when they <laughs> miss just be quiet and everybody will know that Duncan has it. Tim had 19 rebounds against Clemson yesterday 15 against Virginia on Friday. Squeezes this one inside to Sean Allen working on Maddox and Maddox blocks it. Allen gets it back undaunted puts it up and in. Over the last 10 games or so of the season Allen really began to give Wake Forest the kind of performance they needed inside to support Duncan and it looks like he's ready to do it in this championship game. Tech needs a big basket they call on Marbury. Not this time however. The big fella playing a little point guard gets it out to run. Bob that's the transition game we talked about in transition it's awfully hard to find those three point shooters and wake forth among the best in the country. Number three nationally in three point shooting. And Maddox shut off by Allen and a foul on Sean Allen. Fourteen three only the Marbury basket for Georgia Tech and One. Dave Odom with his big man controlling everything inside. One thing that you wouldn't expect the Yellow Jackets to have any problem doing is scoring. And another foul on Wake Forest. This foul on Crawl. Crawl. Ricky's first. And officials timeout. So Wake Forest gets to the first mile marker in this championship game in great shape behind Tim Duncan leading 14 to 3. The culmination of this basketball celebration the ACC championship matching Wake against Georgia Tech and Tim Duncan. And we've only played four minutes folks. <laughs> Five rebounds available on the Georgia Tech glass and Duncan's gotten every one of them. Barry loads up. And Duncan tipped that one away. And it was last touched by Tech. Georgia Tech shooting, Bob. Now one for seven. Wake Forest six out of seven. It brings to mind that first game in Western Salem. Bobby Kremen's club in the second half missed 17 straight field goals and went 12 minutes without scoring. And the Deeks were able to come back and win it behind Tony Rutland by three. There's a travel on parole. Keep in mind that, that Georgia Tech can score quickly and they score in spurts in that Maryland game. The team sort of traded spurts. And I think this is just one of the first spurts of this game. What Wake Forest needs to do is keep the pressure on by some offensive efficiency. Not going to be perfect. That was a turnover against Corral. But Georgia Tech is a team that you would like to keep down as long as you can, not let them get off the mark. Harpering. His first two today. 24 Great. against Maryland. Mm -hmm. Stop off the dribble, going straight up, shooting the ball. He's had a big tournament, as you mentioned, Bob. And I think for Georgia Tech to be successful, he's got to put up some big offensive numbers. Over Marbury. And for all controls. Easier for Georgia Tech to cover the shooters in the set offense. LaRue still burns it. Good ball movement by Wake Forest. They are playing as well offensively, I think, as Dave Odom could hope for. When they finally do miss a shot, they get the offensive rebound. Shot clock hits 10. Really it helps Wake Forest to be able to get out and pressure the three point shooters. They can get right up on them. They don't have to worry about them getting by them. How about this out? Parole takes the turnaround. That's a transition basketball. Now Maddox and Barry run into one another. 19 to 5, Wake Forest. The Demon Deacons can pressure on the perimeter. They don't have to worry because if the perimeter guys go by, they have big number 21 back in the lane, and he is a formidable obstacle. Marbury. Three point. 
All six or six of his points all on threes. 19 to 8. Bob, he's got a look of intensity in his eyes, and it appears that he's not going to let his team fall out of this game early. Take it easy out of here. Don't hold up. And you can hear Dick Paparo screaming to the big men. No holding. That's, that's all well and good for Dick to say, but Duncan's killing him in there. The second foul on Sean. Tim Duncan, not only a great rebounder, but look how well he sees the court. That's a tremendous outlet pass. Peral didn't handle it cleanly, or he may have had a layup. And then Peral just takes his time, squares up, and buries it. This is a Demon Deacon team that can play very effectively in the half court, but they can really get up and down as well. You don't think of them as a transition squad, but they sure can be. Harbring missing. Duncan keeps it alive and finally grabs it. That is rebound number seven. And there's another great outlet pass. That was a bullet out to half court. If I'm not mistaken, the tournament record for rebounding is 21 by Shadlick. Duncan may get that by halftime, the way things are going. It's 21 to 8, and he's got nine points, too. Grady's going, he's going to have a 40 40 game. Man. Marbury continues to pump life into the Jackets. Bob, I'm telling you, he's not going to let them die. Ten point Deacon advantage. Those are not short three point shots no, no. either, Bob. And Rutland's right there to contest it. Duncan shovels to Allen. That's his first. If Allen is going to cut through the lane when Duncan has the ball, as he does right here, it's going to make it very hard, much harder for Georgia Tech to come and give help. Harpring is going to go and help against Duncan, but it puts a doubt in your mind if your man is then going to go to the basket and he's going to create an offensive opportunity. You're always a little bit more reluctant to go and help if your guy then goes and scores as a result. Interesting note that John Madry handed us during the regular season in the two games the largest lead by either team was eight points. Blake Forrest in a blink of an eye it seemed jumped off to a 14 point lead right now it's a 10 point advantage for Wake Forest second free throw coming for Sean Allen. And on this note he's able to clear to Marbury. Drew Berry. Not to Matt Harpring. Matt lost the dribble but recovers. Harpring may be a little too quick out on the perimeter for Sean Allen. Now LaRue matched up on Marbury. Another long three. This one short. Harpring's able to snatch it out of there. And Harpring is able to hit it. And here's that three point offense, Bob. They started very slowly. Wake Forest ran off to the 14 point lead. Now it's down to seven. When you can score like Georgia Tech, you're never out of the game. Very Braswell into the Deeks. Harper really playing off, trying to help against Duncan inside. Allen. Needs to continue to be active. And we've got a foul on Harpering, his second. And you know why he got that foul, Bob? He reached in. Had he just held his position, it may have been an offensive foul. Two on Harpering. Big call with 10.32 left in this first half. We'll be back after this message from Bud Light. to two Georgia Tech run has closed the gap to seven and it's the three point offense Matt Harpring always ready to shoot it once he catches it and then Stephon Marbury 
You've got to be so worried about his quickness to the basket. Watch how quickly he rises and shoots this three. A long three, and he buries it. Marbury, three of five from the field. The rest of the team, two for ten. Marbury and the three-pointers keeping Georgia Tech in it early. Stephen Goolsby. Dan, you mentioned his great play off the bench. Now checking in for the Deeks. Goolsby had 11 against Clemson yesterday and nine in the preceding day against Virginia. Gary Saunders has also checked into the ball game for the Yellow Jackets. And more importantly, Bob, Harpering is on the bench with those two personal fouls here. We still have 10-22 left in the first half. Georgia Tech in the man-to-man. -man. Wake Forest set has things cleared out inside for Duncan, but he shuffled his feet. Which is fine on the dance floor, but <laughs> not when you got the ball in your hands. Well, it's okay when you have the ball in your hands, provided that you're dribbling. <laughs> yeah. 21-14 Wake. And for Wake Forest. With this lineup in the game, you've really got to pay a lot of attention to Barry and Marbury. And Alyssa is going to pick up the foul coming over the back of Duncan. That will be his second. The shots that Marbury has missed have basically been on the inside as he's taking it to the basket. He does an excellent job moving without the basketball. Rutland brushed off a screen right there, but he knows Duncan's around, and so he flips it up, tries to get it higher on the board to get it over Duncan, and as a result, he misses the shot. And Elizabeth now picks up his second personal foul. Parole lobs it in. Duncan zips it out. Rutland buries the three. Now Marbury has had good pressure on him most of the game, but with Duncan on the ball, with the ball inside, Marbury took a step toward the interior, and Duncan can really pass him. 24-14 Deeks. Alisma, that time Duncan got help from the backboard, but boy, Alisma knew right where the big man was. Ball just slipped out of his hands, but that's the kind of problems that the mere presence of Duncan creates. Duncan nails that pivot foot to the floor. Tries to dribble inside, that won't work. Maddox, for all they fight for it. And the arrow gives it over to Georgia Tech. With Alisma with two personal fouls, Maddox now trying to match up against Duncan. And that's one of the ways that you can do it. Grab him, push him, and there you see Marbury cheating into the lane, cheats a little too far. Duncan whips that pass over there, and Rutland doesn't take any time at all to get it off. I continue to marvel at the passing abilities of Tim Duncan. It's one of the parts of this game, Bob, that has really improved. And Maddox is able to score over Tim. Well, that is a tough shot inside by Maddox. That's a place if Georgia Tech can get some offense, they desperately need it. But everybody out covering the three-point shooters, if you can score inside, you can loosen the defense up a bit. Braswell able to protect it away from Barry. Braswell, another one of those guys who's played very well off the bench. Shot clock under 10. You notice as the clock goes down, the ball goes to the hands of Rutland. And he yeah. dribbles it off the screen. Out of bounds to the Jackets with 7.43, the fifth turnover for the Deeks. Time out of Greensboro. We will be back after this message from Clark West Auto Parts. Nations Bank, a corporate partner of the 96 Olympics, presents this Olympic salute to excellence question. Who is the only athlete who have ever won a gold medal in both the Winter and Summer Olympics? Interesting query, and we'll have the answer a little bit later. Wake Forest is at 10 of its first 13 to build this 24-16 lead. Georgia Tech, 6 of 17, and relying on the threes to get an extra point on four of those six field goals. Wake Forest has turned it over a couple of times, Bob. Five to be specific, and they only average about 13 turnovers a game, and that's really been the only part 
of their game. They're shooting the ball very, very well, but the turnover is the only part of the Wake Forest game here early that has been a little suspect, and it has allowed Georgia Tech to stay in the game. And it's out of bounds to Wake Forest. Rusty LaRue coming back into the ball game now for the Deeks. And it's going to be uh, Braswell to go out. 7.24 remaining in the first half. But speaking of the Deacons shooting, Dan, against Virginia, 44% from the floor yesterday. Against the uh, Clemson Tigers, 43%. So the Deacons really cranked it up a notch today for the championship game. Bob, they've had a couple of more transition opportunities today, and I just think that that's very, very important as now Maddox. We showed you a replay before where he had his arms wrapped around Duncan. He did it that time. Now Maddox has two fouls, so the foul problems for Bobby Kremen starting to add up. Trying to find Duncan there. He wraps his arm around him. Duncan gives him a little shove. Now he wraps his arm around him again. Now he's grabbing him. Now he wraps his arms around him again. <laughs> Tough to guard that guy. Rusty LaRue. He has been a thorn in the side of Georgia Tech throughout his career at Wake Forest. He had 19 in Atlanta earlier this year and just by a split second missed winning the game on that last shot against the Yellow Jackets. Here's Maddox. Outside Harpering. That's a three. His second three-pointer of the game. Georgia Tech really needs to turn up the pressure on defense. Wake Forest having too easy a time running their offense. They're getting the cuts they want, they're getting the passes that they want, and they're getting very easy shot opportunities. Allen travels. That's good defense by Harpering. A good idea by Wake Forest to attack Harpering, though, because he's got two personal fouls, although that is the sixth Wake Forest turnover. 26-19, the Wake lead stands at seven, the biggest lead, 14. Oh. And that's a charge on Marbury. Marbury, as we mentioned, very aggressive on the offensive end, sees the chance to get past Duncan and actually slips going inside. He was trying to pass that ball, but he took it in a bit too close. Well, it will not be a player control foul. That's right. It was ruled that the contact occurred after Marbury had passed the ball. So since it is not a player control foul, and that is foul number seven against Wake Forest, or excuse me, against Georgia Tech, Wake Forest will get to shoot the one and one. And because Wake Forest is shooting one and one, Allen, who left the game, has to come back in to do it because he was the person who drew the charge. Stay tuned at halftime when Dick Vitale presents the Direct TV Dish Out the Winners sweepstakes. Rolls in his third point of the afternoon. Young man from Raleigh and East Wake High School who played for Phil Spence, the former NC State standout, then to Anderson Junior College and now with the Deacons. Larry Rose We're polishing that ball. That's right. <laughs> Sean Allen with a smile, looking for point number four. And he missed it. Harpering jumps in to claim it. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. You know, Bob, for as well as Wake Forest has played offensively in this game, a Georgia Tech score right here, two point basket, would cut the lead to six. So. This Georgia Tech team with their three-point offense has stayed within striking distance. The dish and the bank for Marbury. He's got 11. Great feed. Now we've got a six-point game. The Wake Forest faithful making some noise. As well as those representing Georgia Tech. Duncan. And silent offensively the last few minutes and picks up again with his 11. That is an impossible shot to defend. You keep Duncan about six feet from the basket. If he's going to come up with that jump hook from there, there's just nobody who can guard that. Maddox. The four threes yesterday against Maryland, his first today. 29-24. If the other guys get two and you get three, you gradually creep back in the game. <laughs> it may take a while, but you'll get there. Deeks up 14 early. 
A miss. But Duncan is able to tightrope that sideline. No, that big toe hit the strike. Duncan has such amazing hands. That was good defensive pressure by Georgia Tech. Duncan was in a tough spot. They double teamed him. There was nowhere for him to go, and they did it without foul. 29 24 Wake Forest. Marbury penetrates and missed it. Even though he knew he'd beat Duncan, he felt like Tim would be coming from behind. Rusty sort of caught that ball in between steps and he was trying to get his feet stopped. And both coaches exhorting their troops. Wake Turnover is really piling up now for the big stand. That's eight. Harper just barrels in. Boy, he's got to be careful. Playing with two personals here with 420 left in the half. LaRue reverses. Duncan getting gripped down. He does. away from Barry. Mock. <laughs> Wake Forest now in the zone. Marbury for three. Too long. Saunders has it. But nowhere to go inside. Saunders takes the outside shot and misses it. 11 rebounds for Tim Duncan and 13 points. <laughs> He's still got more than three minutes to go in the first half. Man to man for Georgia Tech. Rutland for three. Bang. Georgia Tech isn't the only team that can shoot threes. Barry to Harper. Long three for Barry. Guess who? That wasn't a very good possession for Georgia Tech. And too much of a hurry. Rutland's feeling it, huh? Four three pointers for the Hampton, Virginia sophomore. And Bobby Kremlin drops a 20 second timeout to talk about it. Georgia Tech was down 14, whittled it back to five. But Rutland and Duncan have spurted the Diggs up 13. Bobby Cremens calls the timeout. He wants to talk about it, but he wants his players to do something about it. Not a lot of defensive pressure out on the perimeter. And early in the game, that resulted in easy passes inside for Tim Duncan. Rutland just very, not very close to him. And Rutland just pulls up and fires. Tony Rutland, Dan in the game, and Winston-Salem nailed six against Georgia Tech, and that's the high watermark for a Deacon in a game this season. Boy, he's got some stroke. And his game has just improved and improved and improved as he has understood his role and gained confidence as this season has gone on. And you've got a guy like Duncan on the inside and those three-point threats on the perimeter. This Wake Forest team is a lot to handle. Maddox in and out with the three. The rebound last touched by Perrault. Georgia Tech has it. We have a timeout here in Greensboro with 2.20 remaining in the half. The Deeks by 13. And we'll be back after this message from Bud Light. An 8-0 Wake Forest run has the Deacons back up by 13. And Tim Duncan having an outstanding first half. Rips this rebound away from Maddox and Barry goes up, misses the shot, but with great hands, tips it in. Bob Duncan, six of eight from the field, 13 points, 12 rebounds. Tim Duncan's father on the left, his sister on the right. They are certainly enjoying the performance by Tim Duncan. On the other side of the coin, we talked about the big stars and how the big stars must produce in this kind of a situation. Drew Barry, 0 for 4, hasn't scored in the game. They can't afford Georgia Tech 
to go without a contribution from Drew offensively. Harper. Georgia Tech the last few possessions nothing but the three point offense not even an attempt to get the ball inside and they they've gone cold from three point range when you're a player Dan and you see the type of start that Tim Duncan had in this game where he got every rebound and every basket to start the game does that plant the seed you say well nothing inside the day boys we're gonna have to win this with jump shots I don't think you think that consciously Bob but I think that once he blocks a couple of shots subconsciously you say okay I'm not going in there again. I heard someone say that he doesn't play with a great deal of passion and intensity <laughs> out there. Are you kidding me? Marbury blocked by Perot. Boy, the Deeks are coming in waves now. LaRue up top for all. He travels. Tim Duncan can't get the rebound himself. Tips it, sees his teammate Peral. That is simply a great play by Duncan. He knew Peral was there. He looks at him before he tips the ball. Is there anything that Tim Duncan hasn't done this afternoon? We have talked this weekend about the great performance of Randolph Childress from a year ago when he carried the Deeks to the championship. And we were all sitting around at breakfast this morning. He said, well, that was, can't top that. <laughs> Here is uh, Exhibit A for 96, the championship game performance of Tim Duncan. Harpering, blocked by Peral, taken away by Duncan. Two blocks and two possessions for Peral. Wake takes a 20. <laughs> Rutland just wanted to keep playing, fire Absolutely. up another three. Rutland thinks Dave Odom's overcoaching at the moment. <laughs> Our nation's back Olympic salute to excellence question who is the only athlete to win gold at winter and summer Olympics American Eddie Egan in boxing in 1920 in bobsled in 1932. Marbury looking a little frustrated over on the bench Harpering does a nice job getting open but remember Peral six feet ten and moves very well he closed the ground that Harpering had created with the quick dribble. He's got a fingertip on the ball. Tim Duncan's first half. 13 points, 15 rebounds. And I trust our statistician, Mr. Madry, implicitly. He says he's missed two shots, but I, I can't recall. <laughs> Six of eight from the floor is Duncan. He also has two blocked shots. The difference between the shot clock and the game clock, Bob, is in tenths of a second. So Rutland goes to war. Goolsby can't beat the clock, and the first half is over. Bobby Crummins and the Jackets have their work cut out for them. There is a fire in the eye of the Deacons today. Led by the big man, Tim Duncan. Drew Barry shut out in the first half. And Georgia Tech trails by 15 at the break. Paul Cameron coming up next. Take a look at our Ford game plan for Wake Forest. They certainly can't let up in this game. We said substitutes should either maintain or improve. Well, for Wake Forest, they need to maintain. No mercy. Keep crushing them. And for Georgia Tech, they certainly need to improve. And I think the way you do that is you attack on offense, you attack on defense. In the first half, they were spread out to the perimeter. Michael Maddox, Eddie Alisma, I think, need to get involved on the inside on offense. Drew Barry needs to get involved in something on the offensive end. Those three guys, you can think of them, three-headed monster, tricycle. Tricycle doesn't work very well with one of the wheels off, and Drew Barry needs to get going. Drew Barry had hit four of ten three-pointers in the tournament before today. At this stage has belonged to that man, Tim Duncan. 39 24. Oh that's the score that's not Duncan's points and rebounds. <laughs> okay. The Ricky, Deeks. Ricky Peral had a pretty good first yes, half. Yes he did. Had two blocked shots. He had four assists as well. The tournament record for total rebounds belongs to Ronnie Shavlik with 54. 
Well, Tim Duncan just five away from that after his 15 in the first half. The championship game record for most rebounds is 21 held by Shavlik at 55. And Duncan obviously has a great shot at that. Well, you figure there's going to be a couple missed shots in the second half, so since he's getting the ball. Man to man defense by Georgia Tech. LaRue. This rebound goes to Alyssa. It's only the eighth rebound of the game for Georgia Tech. Of course, Wake Forest hasn't missed very many, so it's hard to get rebounds when the other guys aren't missing. Marbury up top of Lisman. Here's Drew Berry. Maddox. Berry only had two assists in the first half as well, Bob, so. Georgia Tech's offense struggling all the way around and I think they need to make a run here early in the second half just to establish themselves. Put me of a seed of doubt in the mind of the Demon Deacons. Let's be clearing it out to Maddox. Wake Forest doing a good job getting back on defense. Georgia Tech hasn't really been able to get the transition game in high gear. Rolls it up and in. Duncan actually was looking away that time. He turned his head just for a moment, just at the point that Maddox made the move to the basket. Action, action, action. Oh, almost had that. Yes. One. Here's LaRue. So we talk about with attacking, Bob. When you attack, sometimes you give up some things, but they really need to make something happen on defense. Maddox pops out on Rutland, and Tony throws it away. Harbrink coming two on one with Marbury, and Harbrink buries it. Ten for Matt, and Georgia Tech has cut the wake advantage to 39-28. That steal creates a transition basket, and that's where Georgia Tech needs to go. Sometimes for shifts in momentum and what would cause a particular change in a game. Sometimes it's halftime. Bob, we, saw, we saw that play at the end of the first half. It's Peral. Let's go with a three. And carries it. And that helps. In the front, right at the end of the first half, Dave Odom called the 20-second timeout, and Tony Rutland was a little irritated because he wanted to keep playing. I'm sure Dave Odom, with the way his squad was playing in the first half, wanted to just keep playing. 42-28. Harbrink barrels in. Duncan's there. I don't know whether he got his hand on it or not, but he certainly bothered Harbrink. Fouls on Maddox. Bob, that's one you just have to forget about. If Tim Duncan is trying to windmill this baby with one hand, good screen by Peral, you may have a shot, but he's going to take it up and down, go down with two hands. There's nothing you're going to do right here except commit the foul. Tim's second free throw attempt today. And just to hit the front of the rim. Well, there has to be some weakness in the game. <laughs> 28. Barry driving and missing. And Allen rebounds. And Barry reached in for the foul. Bobby get the idea that Drew Barry's a little bit of frustration starting to creep in. Keep in mind that Bobby Kremen's squad coming in here has won nine games in a row and been very impressive doing it. And all against ACC competition. The latest RPI report this morning that included games of last night. Georgia Tech with the toughest schedule in the country. Allen able to recover. Nope. Barry takes it away. Up to Marbury. And on Peral. Score it. Count it. And a foul. Peral tried to get in position to draw the charge, but Barry and Marbury out on the fast break in a two on one situation. LaRue trying to hustle back. Peral gets the foul because he never really got his body turned to face Marbury. Marbury hits him and Peral is still turned. 
Dave Odom knows that that's not a very good play, and Georgia Tech going to the free throw line in the person of Stephon Marbury for their first free throw of the game. And that's an indication, Bob, as Marbury gets it to go, how much they've stayed on the perimeter. You're not going to draw foul opportunities and create free throw opportunities standing on the perimeter shooting jump. Rutland will take it. Marbury put a hand in his face. Aral <laughs> takes it again. Good! He just needs to step back two or three feet. Yeah, he was way too close on that first one. And a foul inside. And it's on Peral. Peral. It will be his third. Well, Peral and Harpring are really going at one another. Tim Duncan with the big dunk and the Deacons with a big lead up 16. <laughs> ACC basketball is brought to you in part by Toyota. 47-31. The parents of Ricky Parol here in the United States coming from Spain, their first visit and the first chance to see Ricky play in this ACC tournament. And in this second half, they have seen Ricky Peral in hand to hand combat with Matt Harpring, and Peral is doing a very, very good job. A 16 point lead for the Diggs, Georgia Tech basketball. Saunders, Barry, Harpring, Marbury, and Alisma out there for the Jackets. Still can't get one to go. Bob, that almost looked like a diamond in one or box in one against Stephon Marbury. Duncan looking for that lob pass inside. Ah, missing. Marbury is able to save it. Tech again advancing down 16. And Barry throws it away. Marbury. Cut to the bucket. Pass goes to the bench. Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Boy, he's got to love what this game of basketball has done for his son. Boy, and, and vice versa. 47 31. Not quite as animated as Dave Odom. Get out of here. Get out of here. The hook from 10 feet. Haven't seen that one today. 49 31 17 points 17 rebounds for Duncan and a steal and a pass and Rutland oh Rutland just hurt himself Rutland just hurt his knee And that might be a cramp, but you could hear him cry out in pain even before the play got to the basket. Braswell will come in to take his place. That looks like what it might be is a cramp. Now remember, this is the third game in three days. We forget sometime at the rate that these kids perform. This is a tough thing physically. You can see there's no contact there or anything else. He cries out in pain and goes down and he grabs. It looks like he's grabbing his knee, Bob. It's hard to tell here. He plants that foot. He's, you can see on that replay very clearly he's shouting out before Harpering even gets there. There was no contact at all. Tony going to the locker room. Having scored 15, and you'll be able to hear it, I believe, as Rutland comes at you. And you could hear him holler out. You're exactly right, Dan. Right before Harper got there. 49-31. And that that really that's got to be a matter of great concern. Yes. Barry won't go, and Duncan's got another one. Later today, 
hope these teams will find out where they're headed in the NCAA and you want to have everybody healthy. Braswell. Goolsby got a hand on it. Marbury alone. Great. 17 for Stefan. Bob Barry still hasn't scored. His lowest point total of the year is three. And with, with Barry not scoring, that's a very bad sign for Georgia Tech in, the, in Georgia Tech in those games. Where Barry has scored well, the Yellow Jackets win, but if he scores poorly, it doesn't get stepped out of bounds. If he does not score well, then Georgia Tech loses. In fact, only three players have scored for Georgia Tech today. The Dicks have turned it over 13 times. Only Harbring, Maddox, and Marbury have scored today for Georgia Tech. The Dicks, 13 turnovers now, a list by, and it goes. So Eddie joins the ranks in the scoring column. Some more pressure from Barry. That's excellent pressure defense on the basketball. Goolsby baseline back to Duncan. Peral. Big three. Two big threes for Peral here in the second half. Has 10. Maddox trying to get the fourth on Ricky. Nice turnaround. Georgia Tech offense, Bob, looks like it's a little more in sync out there at the moment, but unfortunately, they're so far behind, they can't afford to be trading baskets. Gonna have to make some plays on the defensive end. Braswell. Duncan gets it back and backs it in. Duncan just looking for more rebounds. <laughs> Braswell. Wake Forest man to man has been very effective. Maddox and LaRue knock that one away. Still loose. LaRue claims it. And baseballs it up to Braswell. Duncan. Now Wake resets. And this one behind Goolsby out of bounds to the Yellow Jackets. <laughs> Dave Hoda giving some instructions over there on the sidelines. I'm out. <laughs> we'll be back after this from Bud Light. The 43rd ACC Basketball Championship from the Greensboro Coliseum. And the Deacons in control, 54-38. Tim Duncan has been extremely aggressive on the offensive end. Elisma actually got a hand on that one, but all it does is keep the ball alive for Duncan to get it back in the basket. What a game Tim Duncan is having. What a tournament Tim Duncan has had. In this game, 19 points, 19 rebounds, two blocked shots. He had four assists in the first half. And a fast approaching ACC tournament records in rebounding. Randolph Childress rewrote the scoring record book for the tournament here last year. And now we understand from the Wake Forest locker room a mild knee sprain. They are hoping that he will be able to return. The hope obviously is that if he can't return today and they may not need him today but the hope would be that he certainly be ready to go by next weekend. Oh wow. <laughs> Indeed. Oh wow. He just keeps moving further and further back. 20 for Marbury. I'm sorry, Dan. Keep in mind, Bob, that there's plenty of possessions remaining in this game, and the Georgia Tech's firepower still there. Another fine block by Alyssa, and it's out of bounds to Tech. Look at the range on this three-point shot. 
But the amazing thing is how quickly he gets himself ready to go right there. He looks as if he's going to put it on the deck to go by you. You don't expect him to rise up from that far away. There's no defense against that. Marbury backdoor oh. cutting. Oh. Got it up over Duncan, but a foul on Braswell. Marbury makes the great cut. What quickness to get started, but he knows Duncan's there, and Marbury has not had any luck getting it over Duncan and in the basket. Peral very nearly got that pass. And for Braswell, it's injury along with the insult because he gets hit in the face after he gets called for the foul. Stefan's 21st. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. Drew Barry walking back to the scores table. He'll check in at this point. Marbury's now got 22 points. The rest of his team has 21. And that man has failed to scratch. Drew Barry, Harpering with 10. 54-43. Marbury has kept Georgia Tech within range. And again, with their three-point offense, 11 points is within range. Rutland you see in the corner there coming back to the Wake Forest bench. He's got down the lane Braswell. Great look from Duncan. Hard bounce Saunders up and in. That's the Georgia Tech transition game. Rutland's got a knee brace on Bob. And putting on his warm up jersey on the Wake bench. 56-45. Inside. Well, that was and the Great screen by LaRue. 58-45. Lisma runs it down. Barry. Harper. Harper has been very quiet in the second half. Lisma outside. Here's Harper going up and scoring. Never say die attitude of Matt Harper. It's an 11 point game again. 58 47. Man to man for Georgia Tech. Near steal by Saunders. Now he gets it. Harper comes up with a chance to cut it into single digits. Bremens watching his Yellow Jackets come back to life with 8.08 to play. It's an eight point ball game. Deacons 58 50. Let's take a look at our smart play, and it comes from yesterday's Maryland Georgia Tech game. Stefan Marbury for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets coming up with the steal and hoop here. You see Maryland rebounds and watch Marbury pick it off and lay it in. And that helped put Tech in the title game. He's got some more up his sleeve, I'm sure, in the final 808. There's that brace you mentioned, Dan, on the right knee of Tony Rutland. Well, we've talked about the tremendous performance that Tim Duncan has had this afternoon, but Stefan Marbury has kept his team within range. Now, if Drew Barry can get hot. Georgia Tech still has a shot. It really changes the tone of the Wake Forest offense without running. Maddox with his fourth foul. Corral gets the good screen, and now Maddox can beat Duncan across one way. But watch Duncan how quickly he comes back the other way. And again, that's a product of the guards finding Duncan as soon as he's open. If that pass is just delayed a second, then Maddox has a chance to recover. And Rutland coming back in the game. Dave Odom knows how important it is at this stage of the game to have his point guard, even a gimpy-legged point guard, in the game. 
22 for Duncan. So Maddox with the four personals blocks out of Corral, but Duncan strips the cords. 60 to 50. And a timeout in Greensboro. 7.53 remaining in the championship game. Wake Forest leads it by 10, and it continues to be in large part the Tim Duncan show. Stephon Marbury, however, keeping his own Yellow Jackets in the game, getting it to Barry. That was Barry's first three of the game. Tim Duncan draws a lot of attention, and as a result, Braswell's open. Duncan has done everything else, also has a couple of assists today. Duncan off the screen, great position inside with the left hand. What a ball game. The numbers, and you can add to that line, two block shots today. Sensational. But yet, the Yellow Jackets are within range. Barry hit a three a moment ago, and that may be a sign of things to come. The Jackets warming up to the task at hand. Nine out of their last ten. And Barry faking, firing, and missing. And the rebound out of bounds, last touched by Goolsby. Bob, that's an indication of how far in the hole Georgia Tech got themselves that they've made nine of their last ten and they're still behind by ten points. Wake trying to get set up defensively here. As the ball was played in, Goolsby and Braswell were pointing at one another as to where the matchups would go. Corral draws Harper. Maddox. Now Marbury driving in and Braswell fouled him. Well, just Sorry. before we went to the timeout, Tony Rutland re-entered the game, but Rutland's not out there now. And if you look over at the Wake Forest bench, they're working on Rutland's knee over on the bench. Now, this is an extremely important game. You want to win the ACC championship, no question about it. But you've got to make sure that Rutland is ready for next week, so you don't want to have him aggravate that injury now. And he's putting on his warm-ups again. We may not see him for the rest of the game. Inside to Maddox. Outside Saunders. Duncan rebound. His 20th. Later today, the Deeks will receive their sixth straight NCAA bid. Second longest active streak in the ACC. Foul on Goolsby. Dick DeParo calling an illegal screen, and Dave Odom insisting that. Goolsby was pushed from behind. It's like the evil twin argument. <laughs> Georgia Tech would love to add to that total of 19 here, and Marbury, a little long this time. Rebound and out of bounds is Goolsby. <laughs> Goolsby with the laugh. He went way up for that rebound. The first thing he did on his way down before he even got to the ground was look at his feet, and he could see he was going to land. Right on the O there in Coliseum. A mix up for the Deeks left Marbury alone. Well, those last two three pointers that Marbury has attempted have not been works of art. That hit the board rather than the rim, so the shot clock still ticking. Nice feed. And the bucket goes. Saunders tips it in. Gary's second bucket, he's got four. Eight-point game again. Maru drives it hard. Goes right out. I'm open. Nails. And a timeout taken by Georgia Tech. And Bobby Kremens really in the ear of Marbury. I think about some of those three-point shots with 5.56 to play. A timeout in Greensboro and a 10 point lead for Dave Odom and the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Wake Forest 62, Georgia Tech 52. The rebounding number is for Tim Duncan. He has 20 rebounds in this game, which gives him 54 for the tournament, tying the all time record of Ronnie Shavlik established in the second ACC tournament. And a reminder of some of the great centers in this league, Dan, Tommy Burleson with those wonderful NC State squads, an every case winner in back-to-back -back years, one of two men to do it, Larry Miller being the other. 
Got a quick look there at Tony Rutland on the bench now with a knee, knee uh, or an ice pack on his knee rather than a knee pack on his ice. But he's got an ice pack on his knee. And with 5.45 to play, the possession's becoming critical for Georgia Tech. Barry, along with the three. Goolsby get tangled up with Marbury, and now a foul on Parole. That will be his score. And for Wake Forest, you want to move your feet, play tough defense, force Georgia Tech to shoot the ball over top. You'd rather not foul and creep closer to the, the time in the game when Georgia Tech would be able to score without running time off the clock. Three. He may be the best catch and shoot guy in this league. He just catches it and buries it. Sixty-two fifty-five. It's good pressure. Much more active now. Georgia Tech, particularly on the ball. Of course, it helps to have Rutland out there. Marbury commits the foul. Against LaRue. LaRue is a guy who will deceive you. You play Rusty LaRue for that three point shot, but he has de a deceptive first step. He doesn't really blow by anybody to the basket, but he gets his head and shoulders past you, and you before he forces you to commit the foul. Under five minutes remaining. has just been phenomenal attacking the basket today. Perry leaves it for Saunders. The runner is good. That's really a dangerous pass by Drew Barry. Bobby Kremens is exhorting his troops on the defensive end. They've got it back to seven once again. LaRue drives close again. And he puts it in. Duncan gives the bump, creates a little bit of space. Alisma, not tall enough or strong enough to keep him out of there. Bobby Kremen's reaction, he knows that there is no defense against that. Drew Barry will shoot two free throws, just the one three-pointer today. Drew Barry with one field goal and ten attempts. And now a rare miss at the foul line, an 82% foul shooter. And I think you're right, Dan, as we got a peek there at Tony Rutland. He may well be done for the day. Bigger fish to fry. But if he is done for the day, what a job Rusty LaRue has done stepping in for. You know, it looks like Marbury almost is playing for the steal and not expecting LaRue to get by him, but LaRue showing that toughness has gotten two drives to the basket for buckets. And now LaRue takes a three. Gets it back. There he goes again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rusty LaRue knows something about running a club. The quarterback of the Deeks. Here's Braswell, now to Duncan. Timmy with a jump shot this time. 12 of 16 from the floor. Great pass. He Georgia, moves so well without the ball. He certainly does, but Georgia Tech's running out of time. They look better on offense, but their defense has to step it up. You cannot trade baskets with somebody who's got you down by 10. I would say if Duncan gets his hands on the ball, just don't let him shoot it. Found him. Put him on the line. Braswell driving. That's no good. Rebound, LaRue. Saves it. Gets it to Allen. Safety valve for all and Blake resets. Two forty-three left. 
LaRue just doing a great job protecting the ball. Duncan shut off that time. Shot clock at seven. LaRue faking, firing. For Duncan, three blocks, the 21 rebounds, tying the ACC championship game record for most rebounds. LaRue with the friendly bounce, and the Deeks lead by 11. Now, this from the ACC. The Demon Deacons lead it by 11, and Tim Duncan has done it inside. He's done it outside. He had a shot where he almost got a three, but his foot was on the line here. The pump fake, the one step, just buries it. Dave Odom looking. <laughs> That's a familiar look. He, when Randolph was hitting off those baskets last year against the Tar Heels, they've had that same, same applause and look at us. Right, but Dave, you know, he gets, there's that little moment and it's only just a fraction of a moment of elation then he turns around and he's yeah. right back to business 202 the time remaining and 71 to 60. Drew Barry has set a new record for career assists in the tournament with 59. He cashed them all in for a few more threes today in his ball club in the championship game. He's only scored eight points all of those coming in the second half. Had eight assists in this game. But the, the numbers in this game that are the most impressive Duncan 27 points, 21 rebounds, six assists, three block shots, 12 of 16 from the floor. Rusty became a dad on the 31st of January, wife Tammy and Riley LaRue. He's really into this game, isn't he? <laughs> 71-60. Rusty LaRue has scored seven points in the last couple of minutes here. And he has prevented Georgia Tech from getting the ball. Third foul on Marbury. Two minutes left. That's team foul number six against Georgia Tech. So the next Georgia Tech foul, Wake Forest will be shooting. Going for that poke away. LaRue protects it. Now Barry steps in front of Allen. And Sean pushed off to try to get the ball back. His third. Dave Odom is going to call Sean Allen over and tell him the last thing we want to do here at the moment is foul. Georgia Tech will be shooting one and one. And it's Drew Barry at the line. Four fouls now, they tell us, on Sean Allen. That's kind of day it's been for Georgia Tech. Fifth point for Drew. With his eight assists today, Barry becomes the all-time Georgia Tech assist leader, surpassing Travis Best. Harbrink got it. Georgia Tech wants to take a timeout. Harbrink for the fifth straight game with 20 or more points, and it pulls Bobby Cremins and company within eight. Tech takes its second half, 22nd timeout. 71-63. Harpering just has a knack moving without the ball. He's open in the corner. Look how fast he catches that ball and squeezes it off. And now it's an eight-point game once again. Ben, I wanted to ask you about, you mentioned Harfring's ability to catch it and shoot it, but Tech's guards really give him the ball in a great spot. He doesn't have to go reaching for it. Bob, we've been talking the entire game about what a nice job the Wake Forest perimeter guys have done getting the ball to Duncan in scoring position. And for a shooter, you're absolutely right. It's essential that, I mean, if he's got to catch the ball down around his ankles, he's not going to be able to catch and shoot. So where the pass is thrown is extremely important. Again, we'll remind you, Rutland out of the ball game with that knee injury. 
And Deck thrown up the pressure. Marbury can't get the trap, but they throw it away. Deck down eight. Barry fumbled it. Lost it. Marbury's got it. Finds Maddox in the corner. Good. Timeout Jackets. They've cut it to five. The second three-pointer for Mike Maddox today. And Georgia Tech capitalizing on the Wake Forest miscue. Drew Barry is very fortunate here that he doesn't lose the ball. Makes a good decision to not try to dribble it again. You've got Harpering on one side ready to squeeze it off. Maddox on the other. That's Maddox's seventh three-point basket of the tournament. Marbury doing a nice job penetrating, drawing the defense, finding the open guy. Tim Duncan running at you, but Maddox not intimidated, buries it. Each club has claimed three ACC championships. And it looked for all afternoon like this one would belong to Wake Forest. But Georgia Tech has had a couple of key buckets late. And a five-point deficit on the board right now. Dan, the timeout situation with Tech a full timeout remaining. They have used their second half point. And Tech's also got the possession arrow, a very key thing to point out as well. Bob, it's going to be very difficult for Georgia Tech down five with a minute and 26 seconds left. But what they have done very effectively when they were in the game in the first half, it was because they were forcing turnovers. Now in the last couple of possessions, they forced some turnovers. That's what the defense needs to do. They do not have time to let Wake Forest run a lot of time off the clock. I think this is a situation where Georgia Tech might want to look at giving a foul early in the possession. It's a one and one opportunity for Wake Forest. You know, as crazy as it sounds, of course, he's going he's gonna to be the man to put the ball in play. But if Duncan gets the ball back, that might be the guy you want to foul. If there's been one chick in the armor for Tim Duncan this season, it's been the missed free throws in late stages of close games. Now, Wake's won some of those games, but he has had some difficulty. Now, LaRue's going to play it in. They get it to Goolsby. And he is fouled by Barry. Did not appear that Barry was trying to foul him, but in this situation, it's a one on one opportunity so even if he goes down and makes both of them Georgia Tech has time to run it up and if they can get a three to go Bob you trade the two points for the three points and you inch closer. Now Braswell ripping off uh, his jersey I suspect well, there's some blood on it. There's some blood on it but what they do is they go over to the trainer and they say is this jersey saturated and any trainer worth his salt is going to say no and particularly in this situation you get him back in the game. There you go. <laughs> of course the answer is no. Get him back out there. Now Braswell. He's got a cut on his chin possibly. Now Dave Odom he wants to look at this. Now Braswell's going to have to come out of the game. Allen will come in to take his place. So the blood on the shirt isn't a problem. The trainer can wave that baby off. But <laughs> if he's bleeding he's got to come out till they stop the bleeding. This gives Stephen Goolsby a lot of time to think about this one and one. First time at the line today. And Goolsby misses the front end. Up ahead to Drew Barry. Barry's going to take it all the way to the middle. Oh, 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 the, shot. the foul before the shot on LaRue. Seventy-one sixty-six. See the foul clearly coming before Barry tried to shoot it. Now Braswell is right back in. Now they got the band-aid working over there. <laughs> Johnny Rhodes had one left over from yesterday. <laughs> Drew Barry. Yes. Hasn't scored effectively, but has nine assists and three steals. No good. Duck on the board. Splits the double team and squeezes it ahead to Braswell. A minute ten left. Braswell picks up his dribble. And Wake gets a timeout. 
I don't think Dave Odom wanted that timeout. Frank Scagliata turned and pointed to the table and said, "Timeout, Wake." And <laughs> Dave said, "Who called that one?" Well, it's one of the kids on the court. They saw that Braswell was trapped and they didn't think he could get out of it, and somebody called timeout. 71-67. One oh five remaining one of the great finishes a year ago as the Deeks as the Deeks and Tar Heels went to overtime and a good spot here just to go back in our memory banks to the title game on this floor a year ago the tournament belonged to Randolph Childress he wanted some defensive pressure didn't matter. He hit 50 if he needed to. <laughs> Stackhouse tried to tie it and did. The game went to overtime and then an OT. Randolph drive to the bucket and bucket to win it 82 to 80. But Carolina still had a chance. The Tar Heels worked the basketball from out of bounds at midcourt. Jerry Stackhouse misses, but watch how close Pierce Landry's tip comes to going in. Randolph made history. And now the Deacons are trying to duplicate an ACC championship. You see Tim Duncan there up on the podium. Wake Forest Center has established a new tournament rebounding record with 55. Breaking Ronnie Shavlik's old record by one. So as Randolph piled up the points last year, it's been Duncan with the rebounds this year. But the outcome of this one is in doubt. 71-67 Wake Forest and a minute five remaining. An all-world performance from Tim Duncan. Deeks have 23 seconds on the shot clock. I think you'll see Georgia Tech foul before that shot clock runs down. Goolsby just missed one. I think I might give him a try again. Oh, and he was standing on the line. Now he has gone over and back, Bob. The tightrope, and it burns Wake Forest. 19 Deacon turnovers. It's going to take that pivot foot. Now Barry driving in. Back out. Maddox for three. One point ball game. Now you've got time to play tough D. You don't need to foul here. In the middle of Braswell, and Maddox got it. Uh, yes, that's right. It's a that's a foul, and that will be the fifth on Mike Maddox. Mike Maddox has hit some big three-point baskets in this tournament. None bigger than that one right there. It's his second three in the last couple of possessions. Braswell going to the free throw line. With 2.02 remaining, Wake led 71-60. Georgia Tech has hit 10 straight points to cut it to one. And Maddox is done for the day, so a big three-point weapon has been lost. An important 15-point performance by Maddox. Wake Forest only four of nine from the free throw line today. The Demon Deacon struggled shooting free throws against non-conference foes, Bob. They are, they are almost a 75% free throw shooting against conference opponents, but they're struggling today. And now Jerry Braswell, bloodied but unbowed, steps up to the line. <laughs> and even if he makes two, Georgia Tech within a three-pointer of tying the game. That's a heck of a bandit. Sixty nine percent free throw shooter Braswell lines up the second shot this to put the Deacons up three seventy three seventy Marbury drive Marbury scores one point lead for the Deeks shot clocks off. And Marbury with the foul on Braswell. I think they're going to call the foul on Harpering, Bob. It is on Harpering. It's his third. Marbury powers the ball to the basket. Good, quick move. 
Duncan was screened out of that play by Harpering. Marbury able to get all the way to the hoop, felt the pressure on the three-point defense, and decided to take it all the way to the basket. Still a one and one. Big free throws for Braswell. He had a big three-pointer in overtime to secure that win at Florida State in the regular year. Burn the Tar Heels with four three-pointers in Winston-Salem and now trying to ice it, or at least help ice it at the line for the Deeks. Big free throws. 75-72. Under 30 seconds. Marbury again driving. Oh! It's out of bounds to Georgia Tech. Into a nearby phone booth. Here he comes. And right out of, it out of bounds. <laughs> Tech needs three to tie. Marbury drives a foul on the floor on Braswell. His third. Tech has not even looked at a three. These last couple of possessions. They've been, shoot two. they've been very closely defended on the perimeter, but you're right, Bob. Marbury has looked to go right to the basket, trying to get a three-point play that way. The other thing, Bob, is it's really good use of the clock by Georgia Tech. They can get the two. Now they've got to rely on Wake Forest to miss some free throws, but they keep getting the twos, keeping the pressure on. Still, if they can get a steal here. Still a one-point game, 19.4 left. 26 for Marbury. LaRue to get it in. And he gets it into Duncan. And he is fouled. That's what you were saying. That's the guy that they were looking to foul. And now he will shoot two shots. That will be the tenth team foul on Georgia Tech. So at least the pressure of a one-and-one one is gone. But it's just a one-point lead. At 75 74 with 18 seconds left fourth on Harper. Now for Georgia Tech. To get this game to overtime you got to be concerned about your guys in foul trouble. Sometimes you know they could get it to overtime but if they lose all their guys doing it it doesn't really help them very much. Yeah. So Duncan misses the first. Georgia Tech, Tim Duncan went two of seven at the line in the closing minutes. Missed the boat. Georgia Tech bids for the ACC championship on this possession. And it's going to be Marbury to take it. No good. He hit the back of the backboard. Lake Forest ball with 2.3. Rusty LaRue to get it in, and Georgia Tech now wants a timeout. There was some confusion on that jacket sideline, and Bobby Kermit said, hold it, hold it. Let's take a timeout and talk it over. And Bob, I think that the presence of Tim Duncan on the inside created the kind of shot that Stephon Marbury took. He did not try to get all the way to the basket. Braswell with good defense, and that hit the back of the backboard. Dave Odom's reaction again. Now he's got to calm down right away. Bobby Kremens takes a quick glance at the clock to see how much time is left. Stephon Marbury obviously very disappointed. That was not a very good shot, but you've got to give credit to Braswell, who moved his feet, prevented Marbury from getting to the basket. But I think Marbury was looking for the jumper the entire time. I don't think he felt like he was going to get to the basket with Duncan in there, not on that particular kind of a play. And the eagle eye of Dick Paparo, too, to see that ball hit behind the backboard. Hits aside. You're okay, but it hit back in that corner a little bit of the support there and yeah, you'll see it here. Braswell does a great job of moving his feet his hands don't go in there and that ball hits up at the top corner in the back it hit the support actually. That is a tough tough shot. 
Now the Deeks with 2.3. But talk about your ability to come back in a basketball oh, okay. game. I Goodness. mean, they had a shot to win the game. And and with the way, I mean, it was 71 to 60 with two minutes left in the game. And who would have expected that Georgia Tech would have themselves in that kind of a position? The Deacons trying to claim a back to back championship for the second time in its history. There have been other schools that won three straight, but these are the back to back champs. The Deeks of 95 and 96 trying to add their name to that list. Pretty much all they have to do is get the ball in bounds. Big Papar reminds Rusty LaRue he can move on the baseline. Now we got a foul. And this one will be on Saunders. Officials trying to get the players down the other end of the court. Everybody wants to talk about it. Well, of course they <laughs> want to talk about it. Nobody wants to come out there shooting. <laughs> it's going to be Goolsby at the line. And missed that front end of the one and one in this uh, Georgia Tech spurt. 2.3 left. You don't want to foul if you're Wake Forest. If he misses, you don't want to go over anybody's back here. Oh, and he missed that one wide left. So Georgia Tech with a Two or a three now to either tie it or win it. I think it, with this much time, it's going to be a three. Goolsby missed them both. It's going to be Drew Barry to midcourt. No! And the Deacons are the champions of the ACC. appearance in the ACC championship game. The Deacons lay claim to the victory. Their fourth ACC championship. And holding on for dear life at the end. The Deacons trail a let Bobby Crummins ball club by 11 with 2.02 left. And Georgia Tech had two chances to win it. 75 to 74 Wake Forest wins the championship for the second consecutive year. The Deacons rule the Atlantic Coast Conference. Once again as we get ready to go down to Dan Bonner here's a look at the last shot of the ball game off the Goolsby miss Drew Barry head up measured it launched it from midcourt. And it was wide left and the Deacons emerge victorious. Let's go down to Dan Bonner. Thank you very much Bob. I've got with me head coach Dave Odom. Dave congratulations a second consecutive ACC championship. Thanks Dan. Uh, one of the gutty performances I've ever been around in my life. Uh, exciting game. Georgia Tech just came back. Uh, you know I can't say enough. We made a lot of mistakes but they certainly made us make them. Stefan Marbury, Drew Barry, uh, Michael Maddox. Uh, their whole team's great. Bobby Crimmins has done a great job. But I got to say about our team, uh, they've done a great job too. And I'm very, very proud of them, each and every one of them. Um, I've got a lot of great feelings for each one. But right now, Tony Rutland uh, wasn't able to play. I know he felt bad. Uh, I'm happy for our fans. Just a great day for Wake Forest. Dave, the big guy had a heck of a game. What a tournament by Tim Duncan. Well, uh, you know, great players uh, rise to great moments and opportunities. And uh, he's certainly a great player. Um, but even more than that he's a great person and uh, we're awfully fortunate to have him at Wake Forest. Dave when Tony Rutland ran out Rusty LaRue stepped in and he made a couple of big plays some drives down the lane and then that three point basket what a performance by your senior. Well again uh, you know he's one if you drop his name in a hat and they're choosing up sides his name doesn't come out very quick. But the guy that ends up picking him two weeks later is going to say I'm glad I got him. 
Dave, congratulations. A great win. Good luck to you next week. You guys, Coach. Thank you. You're the best. Bob, let's go back to you. He is indeed. Wow, what a performance from Tim Duncan. And a great day for Wake Forest University as they claim their fourth ACC championship. We've got Tim Duncan, the most valuable player of the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament. Tim, a dominating performance by both yourself and the Demon Deacons. What are your thoughts about a second consecutive ACC title? It feels great right now. Uh, I think our guys came out and played very hard and uh, executed what we had to do. Uh, Georgia Tech came back in the second half, and but we held them off. And uh, key guys like Jerry Braswell hit the free throws, and we pulled it out. Jerry Braswell went to the line. They were four very big free throws that he made, but My he didn't dad. seem to be. <laughs> yeah, your dad's been enjoying this whole weekend. Yeah. But Braswell made some big free throws for you. Yeah, he did. He stepped up there and knocked it down. Uh, not nervous as all, at all, and and I just love him for that. Now, when Tony Rutland went down, Rusty LaRue took over at point guard, and he made a couple of big plays for you then. Did you expect Rusty to do that? Rusty plays well out there. Uh, he's, he doesn't, he's not the greatest handler out there, but he gets the job done, and, and that's all we asked for out there. Now, you started very quickly, and it looked like Georgia Tech was trying to play you straight up rather early rather than give a lot of help, and you took the ball right to the basket. Was that your plan? Yeah, they usually don't play me straight up. Uh, they've never doubled me before. Uh, until the end of the game so coming out I just want to attack early and get used to everything now on the last play of the game on the last uh, Georgia Tech shot when Marbury was holding the ball on the inside what were you thinking about that you had to do on that play I knew he was going to take it to the basket he was only down two one or two and uh, and he's played great the whole game so he's going to take it himself and bring it to the basket I just thought I'd get it around him and uh, try to affect the shot well, Braswell kept his feet pretty well. Marbury couldn't get around him. Yeah, he's a great defender. He played defense uh, pretty well the whole game. Uh, Marbury made some great shots outside, and uh, I think we did pretty well on him.